Hello, Coastal Oaks family. Thank you for joining in again. My name is Ryan Fontenot. I hope you are enjoying this series on reaching a generation endangered. It is the passion of our ministry, Rage Ministries, to go after this next generation with the good news of Jesus and equip them to do the same. And so we've been talking about this generation, a generation spoken of in Judges 2.10, a generation that they said this, that they did not know the Lord and they did not know what He had done. See, when we look at Generation Z, we realize this is a generation desperately in need of truth, desperately in need of Jesus, a generation where only 4% of teens surveyed hold to a biblical world view. And we know this, God loves them. He wants them to come to repentance. He wants them to know Him, to trust Him, to be reconciled to Him. So what is God's plan? How is it that God intends on bringing a generation that is far from Him into relationship with Him? We know that God has a plan, and God's plan to reach the next generation is you. No, you don't save anybody, and I don't save anybody. Only Jesus saves, but God intends to use you, and He intends to use me to tell them about the Jesus who can save. And so we begin to take this journey, just one simple step at a time. What does it look like? How can you, how can I begin to take steps to reach this generation? We said step number one, that if we want to reach a generation endangered, we've got to share our lives. We've got to invite them in and step into theirs. We've got to spend time with believers and welcome in non-believers. We've got to press into those who know Jesus and we've got to Point those who don't know Jesus to Him. We've got to be light in the darkness. We've got to share our lives. And then we said as we share our lives with other people, then we begin to share our stories. I believe you ought to tell your stories to believers and non-believers. I believe you ought to share what Jesus has done in your life with those that you know and those that you don't know. See, I believe right now in your community group, small group, Sunday school, whatever you call it, in the people in your church that you know, they need to know your story. They need to hear your Jesus story. And then, as you practice sharing it with them, you'll be able to open up your mouth and share your story with others that don't know Jesus as well. Your co-workers who are wondering how in this crisis are you not freaking out, flipping out, and panicking like the rest of the world? Why is it that you aren't angry with everything that's happening? How do you have peace in this season, in this storm? You've got to share your story. But thirdly, write this down. If we're going to reach a generation endangered, a generation in need of Jesus, we have to, number one, share our lives. Number two, share our stories. But thirdly, write it down. We have to share the gospel. We have to share the gospel. What did Paul say? Paul said this, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because it is is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Everyone who believes the gospel will be saved. Guys, this is the power we have in us. If you have been moved from death to life, from darkness to life, You've moved out of separation from God into relationship with God. If you've said yes to Jesus, guys, you have Jesus in you. You've received the gospel. And now that gospel that is in you is power to change the world around you. But what's the gospel? Well, I really like this definition that was written by Dr. Rice Brooks. He says it like this, the gospel is the good news. Look at somebody right now and say, I got some good news for you. Go ahead, tell them, I got some good news for you. 
See, the gospel is the good news that God became man in Jesus Christ. That He lived the life we should have lived. He died the death we should have died in our place. Three days later, He rose from the dead, proving He is the Son of God and offering the gift of life or salvation and forgiveness of sins, listen, to everyone who repents and believes in Him. That's the gospel. You might want to screenshot that right now. You might want to snap a picture of it right now. Why? Because you need to know what the gospel is. When I'm telling you, you need to tell others this gospel, what I'm telling is you need to share with the world what Jesus has done, who He is, what He's done, and what He offers. See, in Romans 10, 13, there's a beautiful promise. A beautiful promise that says this, everyone, go ahead, tell someone around you, yes, even you, go ahead, e even you. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone. I love this promise. Man, this is one of the promises, man, that I actually am like, like that, that's good news. That's, that's great news. Everyone, anyone, any place, anytime, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, they'll be saved. Romans 10, 13 is followed by Romans 10, 14. And Romans 10, 14 helps us understand why we must share the gospel. See, in order to be saved, they have to call. And so Paul asked the question, well, how will they call on someone they haven't believed? It's a great question. And how are they going to believe in someone in whom they've never heard? Great question. And how are they going to hear without someone preaching or someone telling them? Great question. You see, everyone who calls will be saved. My hands are up. Praise God. But in order to call and be saved, they've got to believe. In order to believe, they've got to hear. In order to hear, someone has to tell them. Look at someone right now and tell them, that's why we've got to tell. That's why we have to tell. We have to tell the world about Jesus because if they don't hear about Jesus, they can't believe. And if they don't believe, they can't call. And if they don't call, they can't be saved. And if they aren't saved, they'll never be reached. We have to share our lives, share our stories, and share the gospel. You have to share the gospel. So I want to teach you today a very simple way to share the gospel. It's going to be one verse, five points, and it's a verse you already know. John 3, verse 16. John 3, 16. If you know this verse, hold your hands up high. I know I can't see you, but hold your hands up high, right? You know this verse. What is the verse? For God so loved the world. Hold up. Will you read it with me? Let's do that. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. This verse, I believe, summarizes the gospel as well as any verse in the Bible. What does this verse tell us? Number one, it tells us this, God loves. Write that down. Number one, it tells us God loves loves for God so loved guys you need to understand this God created you God shaped you God molded you God wants you God loves you for God so loved you need to hear this over and over in Scripture, the Bible would declare and God would demonstrate His love for us. As a matter of fact, Romans 5, 8, for God demonstrates His own love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God loves us. God loves you. God wants you. God loves. You're going, well, what's the problem? God loves me. That's awesome. Number two, write this down. God loves, but man sinned. God loves, 
but man sin. Look close. For God so loved the world. What do we know about the world? The world has rebelled against God. The world has sinned against God. The world has ran away from God. The Bible, Isaiah, the prophet would say it like this. All of us, all we, like sheep have gone astray. We've turned every one of us to our own way. See guys, God loves us. God created us. God made us to be in relationship with us. But we rebel. We sin. God said, don't. We do. God said, do. We don't. God said, stop. We go. God said, go. We stop. Isn't this the reality of your life and mine? Yes, God loves us and God wants us, but we have rejected God. We have ran from God. We have refused God. God loves man sinned. Write this down. But Jesus came. Come on. Guys, here is the gospel. Here's the good news. God loves you. God wants you. God made you. God created you. God desires to have a relationship with you. But you've rebelled and sinned and ran. There's no one righteous. No one who does good. No, not one. And that sin has separated us from God. But Jesus came. What does he say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only, say it, son. Who's his son? Jesus. See, God demonstrates his love for us. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus himself said, I've come to seek and to save the lost. See, the good news for a lost and a dying world is that there's a good God who loves them and is seeking them and wants to save them. God loves man's sin. Jesus came. The Bible says that Christ died on the cross in our place for our sin. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. See, ladies and gentlemen, the wages of our sin, the scripture would say, is death. Separation from life and from God. But the free gift of God is eternal life. Listen, in Christ Jesus our Lord. What's the gospel? That God loves man sinned Jesus came. And I know you're going, that's awesome. God loves me. I've sinned, but Jesus came to save me. But fourthly, write this down. But faith is required. Faith is required. I want you to keep reading. Yes, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. But here's the hinge that whoever, come on, whoever believes in Him, whoever trusts in Him, whoever calls out to Him, whoever comes to Him. See, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. The Bible says that we must believe in John 1.12 in order to receive to all who received Him, to those who believed in His name, He gave the right to become sons of God. So yes, God loves you. And yes, you've rebelled from Him and are separated by your sins. And yes, Jesus died for you. But you have to activate this by faith. You must turn and trust. You must come to Jesus. You must believe in Him. Here's the gospel. God loves Man sinned. Jesus came. Faith required. And then lastly, destiny changed. Destiny changed. Check this out. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him, look, here's one destiny, should not perish. That's one destiny but have what? Eternal life. Every one of us, apart from Christ, 
are headed to an eternity without Christ. An eternal death, separation from God. But when we turn and believe and trust and call out to Jesus, He gives us, grants us eternal, forever life. In our job in this world, our joy in this world is not just to invite people in and share our lives with them. Not just share our stories of what Jesus has done for us, but it's to share the gospel so that they too can step in and have a Jesus story. How does someone receive Christ? Romans 10, 9 simply says it like this. If you. Now I want you to listen to me real close. If you're watching this video and you've said yes to Jesus, you need to be reminded of this. But if you're watching this video and you're wondering how you can begin a life with Jesus, here it is. If you, if you would confess, admit with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. That right now, right where you are, in your home, in your car, on the treadmill, if you would confess, Jesus, you are Lord, you are God, and I need you to be my Lord and my God. And if you would believe, you would trust, you would like take the step of faith in your heart and just believe that God raised him from the dead. Jesus, I believe you're alive. I want you to live inside of me. I want you to hear what God promises. You will be saved. Right here, right now, today, forever changed. All you have to do is say yes to Jesus as your Lord. Yes to him moving into your life. Jesus has already said yes to you on the cross. For on the cross, He died for your sins and in your place. He took all of the wrath of God that was intended for you and absorbed it onto Himself. And He took all the righteousness of His life, the perfection, the holiness, and He'll transfer it to you If right now today, where you are, you would say something very similar to this, Jesus, I believe you're Lord. I have sinned. I have messed up. I have rebelled against you. But Jesus, I want to run to you today. And I want you to move into my life to be my Lord, my God, my Savior, my King, I believe you're alive and I want you to live inside of me and give me life. Jesus, today, would you save me forever? If right now you prayed a prayer very similar to that, you invited Jesus in, the Bible says this, you will be saved. Do you remember the verse we looked at earlier? Romans 10, 13, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's you. And so right now, if you said yes to Jesus, welcome to the family. And I want you to do something for me. I want you to tell someone around you, if they're in the room with you, let them know I said yes to Jesus. If you're a student, tell your mom or dad. If you're a mom or dad, tell your spouse or tell your children. And by all means, contact the church. Men, the staff wants you to wants to know they want to celebrate with you the church wants to rejoice and if you're watching this and you're like i don't know any of the people you just talked about i just want you to comment in whatever means you have whether it's facebook or youtube or instagram i just want you to comment somewhere on there and say today i said yes to jesus someone will see that they'll reach out to you and they'll help you start taking those next steps with Jesus. This world 
is in need of a Savior. And our Savior has a name, and His name is Jesus. Let's reach this next generation endangered together. Let's share our lives. Let's share our stories. Let's share the gospel. Together, we are rage. Together, we are reaching a generation endangered. Don't miss next week our last installment of what it looks like for us to reach a generation endangered together. God bless you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.